All right, so welcome everybody. I'm Becca Sibrian. I teach German at Boise State. Um, and I also teach a freshman seminar course uh, where I use a lot of the um, OER, but um, I'm mainly focusing today on my project for um, our German classes. So, and reworking existing OER here is kind of the, the topic because that's what we did. We worked with a, a text that is um, that was already there to kind of fit our student needs. So um, a little bit of background about me. I mean, I've been teaching German for uh, a long time and uh, I've worked with one textbook, but I mainly use that textbook for uh, structure, right? For vocabulary words and when to teach what concepts. And I created a lot of the materials for the course for me, um, uh, for in-class activities and outside of class activities. And I never really used a lot of the materials in there, except those explanations and the the vocabulary list for my students. Um, and it's expensive. We all know the price of textbooks and how, um, and how expensive they are. And our textbook, our first year textbook that we used for three semesters at Boise State um, was, you know, upwards of $200. Um, and yes, we did use it over several semesters, but I wanted to try to get away from that. Um, so, and also I have thought for years and years and years and years to create something of my own, but I just never had any, I, I didn't know how to go about it. And I have all kinds of folders in my Google Drive that um, have, okay, first chapter, second chapter, third chapter and content in them, but I didn't know how to organize out of all of that. So that's kind of a little bit of background for me. So when the Opal Fellowship came um, across uh, my radar from the Idaho State Board of Education, um, I jumped on this opportunity and this gave me the impetus to um, have some structure and some, some support, um, but then also um, to really get into creating something. And um, the stipend helped, um, but uh, this is a little bit of information. Also, the, the course that was part of the program, well, part of the fellowship uh, offered by Rebus was also very helpful because it gave you the, the nitty gritty of how you go about from idea to publication of an OER. So that uh, gave me structure as well. Um, I currently work uh, with an OER text and I wanna show you briefly, it's from the Center for Open Educational Resources in Language Learning. I wanna show you briefly um, the, the website. Um, okay, it popped up, I hope. Okay, there we go. So if there's any language teachers here, there are a lot of resources here that are all free and open for, for you to, to use. Um, and in all kinds of languages, not just uh, the more commonly taught languages, they also feature a lot of less commonly taught languages. Um, uh, they folk, they're, they're based in um, Austin at the University of Texas there, and they are actively working um, with, uh, with open resources. And so the, the text that I use here um, is um, Deutsch in Blick. Um, so this is a, a screenshot of it and I'll, I'll jump in and show you a little bit of what it looks like as well. But um, this gives me the structure that I need, you know, as far as vocabulary lists and what content to do when, but as you can see, um, I mean, the second edition was in 2000, 2017, but the first edition of this was from 2008, and all of the content here um, is from from that time. So let's we're working with uh, chapter seven right now. So I'm going to jump into that and and show you what it looks like. So this is the textbook. It's all hyperlinked um, pages um, of. Uh, uh, grammar and vocabulary down here and a bunch of videos. Um, so it, it has all of that information, but we wanted to kind of rework this so that it would work um, a lot better in our classes. So um, what we, oh, sorry, what we ended up doing is we decided 
and I am saying we because my partner Francie Borders also applied for this fellowship. And um, as part of the, the fellowship, we tried to figure out, well, what are we going to do? So that was the first step. And we decided that we wanted to focus on the grammar portions um, of the textbook. Um, and it's important to note that the textbook that we're working with um, has a copyright on it that you can rework and remix however you want to. You just have to give attribution to that. So that was that's important to, to note uh, for this reworking. And the um, so we decided there that we would start with the grammar portions. And the reason that we wanted to start there um, instead of content wise is that the grammar explanations were built in this fairy tale language. So it was all about Rumpelstiltskin and Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. Um, and the, the feedback that I had gotten from students is that it was very confusing for them to um, try to do the activities that were in the grammar portion because of the language that was there. Um, and we weren't teaching that language, obviously. Um, so that was, that was where we decided to start was with the, the grammar portion of it. And for us, it was really just a, let's copy this section and post paste this section because since it was open and we had that flexibility of reworking and remixing it for our purposes um, into another platform. And then we were able to edit all of that language that we wanted. Um, and we did that, um, with all of the content. And then we also added explanations um, where we felt that we needed to add explanations into the process. Um, and over the course of, you know, we started this in, in uh, February, 2020, over the course of the next six months, um, we were uh, set to release our text um, to um, our 101 students. And then over the course of the next semester, we did the other half of the chapters and worked with, um, worked with creating content and editing that and making it more accessible to students, um, I feel from, from our standpoint. So that was kind of the, the process that we went about. Um, it was a lot easier for us because we had a baseline, right? We had a, a, an open textbook that we could work with and then go, go around and remixing it and reworking it to, to how we wanted to. Um, the tools, and this is probably where I would want to spend a lot of my time. I'm going way faster than I anticipated here. Um, the tools that we used to do this was number one, Pressbooks. Um, so we worked with the Boise State platform for Pressbooks. And um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the uh, of our Pressbook. Um, yeah, my, why not? Let's do that now um, so that you can see what it looks like. So this is what students will, I'm signed in right now, uh, but this is what students will see um, when they get this link and click on this link. And so um, I'm just gonna, uh, walk you through a little bit introduction. Um, and then over here, uh, it's organized by chapters. So we have, you know, all of the chapters that are related to the, the text that we're working with. Those are the chapter titer, titles from that website. Um, and since I know there's a lot of content in here, I'll click on chapter six. So these are all the idea, the grammatical ideas that we, we were working with within, um, within chapter six. So let's just click on the dative case. And so this is exactly what students see when they um, come and look. So they could read through the explanation. Um, they can, you know, uh, they can print this as well if they prefer to have a printed version instead of a, instead of a digital version. Um, I find that most students just work with the digital version. Um, and, and then and then I'll talk about this. This is an H5P um, add-on for Pressbooks um, that I created in, a, in the H5P platform, and then I copied it um, into this platform. So this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, we're also able to, um, I'm gonna go back to chapter six here. We're also able to, put uh, vocabulary lists on. This is something we're working on right now to make this a little bit more um, uh, 
uh, interactive, um, but this is the vocabulary list that's in the book. So they have it in a couple different places. They can see um, the, the list in a couple different places. So that's number one, press books. And I'd be more than happy to answer questions about working with press books. I find it a very easy platform to work with. There were some formatting issues because we were um, copying from a website that had lots of formatting um, ideas in it. Uh, I'm not, I don't know all of the details with it, but we had to mess with formatting a little bit um, to make sure that it looked okay. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a, a pretty easy platform to work with. So I want to talk about the images that you see here. So we used all open images as well, um, either the images that were in the original um, open textbook or um, images that we thought um, related a little bit to um, the chapter. So we used uh, mainly these two websites, but there's several websites that are um, that have you know, uh, open images for you with just um, a, you know, to attribute where you got that from. And you see that in my press book here, right here, that you can click on that and, and go to the original source. So we work with Pexels and I really like Pexels a lot, pexels.com, um, but you can find, you know, anything. Here's just their, their main um, uh, page, but that's one of the open um, image uh, sources that we use. And then the other one we used was FreePick, which has more uh, graphic ideas. There's a lot of, um, uh, there's photos here, but there's also um, a lot of uh, graphic design images so that you can um, um, edit that or insert that as well. And most of these are free, some of them. Um, you have to pay a little bit, but I just skipped past those ones. And then the other idea that I want to talk about is H5P. Um, and this is the H5P um, uh, explanation thing. But this is where I think students are used to in language classes, kind of those fill in the blank activities or the, the matching activities. And we wanted to include some of this into our press book um, as well, just so that they can get some of those practice and the, the feedback from students on these. I mean, these are some of the, the, the different ideas that you can put into that you can create with the H5P platform um, that are that are open um, and available for uh, for it to, to embed um, within Pressbooks. So um, I uh, my my students love this sort of thing. I think fill in the blank activities for language is boring, but they like that kind of um, support with. Oh yes, I'm getting it right. I can um, I can uh, I, I got all the answers right this time. I'm I'm learning the language, so they like that idea. So, are we done? No. Yes. We have um, a textbook um, in that we've used in 101 for one semester, so in the fall. And then Francie, my partner, is using it in her 101 course this semester. And then I'm uh, working with it in 102. But we're still, you know, we're still editing. I'm still adding content to it. I change things as I feel that they need to be changed. Um, the the students are my reviewers, so if there's something that they I ask pretty regularly um, as part of class, you know, is there something in the reading this week that didn't make sense, and I get feedback from them, and so that's for me is is part of the reviewing process, and I think that that will probably go on for for quite a while, which is okay. It's all right to not have a, a complete book. Um, also. Now that I've done this for this part, I want to spend my summer um, creating the content part of this. So I want to work with this textbook that I'm working with now, the OER text, and to um, create, use all the materials that I've created already um, uh, for support and then kind of tailor that to my needs and my students' needs in the classroom, what I think is most important for them for communication and um, for learning the language. And, and so that's gonna be my process for the summer, at least for part of the text. And then over the next couple of years is to continue adding content 
um, you know, vocabulary and activities and, you know, stuff that um, I use in the class would use in the classroom instead of, you know, all of that information that's there that I just don't use because I don't find it valuable or my students don't find it valuable or um, for whatever reason. So we're not done, but we do have a text that we are um, uh, ready to move on uh, somewhat from, but I think the editing process will go on for quite some time. So now um, I we have some time uh, to, and I'm going to stop my share because I don't think we need to have that screen. I'd rather see all of you instead to ask any questions about platforms, tools, process, if you have any. Um, I'll answer that question live. There's a, a chat work in progress. It's done. It's done. All of the content is there. What I'm tweaking is adding those activities, right? The H5P activities as I go. So if they're reviewing, you know, like dative case prepositions, then, you know, before they read that, I'll create an activity for that and I'll put that in there. Um, and I don't, I don't think that it's, uh, I, I think that they like being as part of the process too. Um, I mean, they're the consumers of this. Why shouldn't they have feedback in the process? Why shouldn't they have a little bit of teeth in the game, so to speak? Yes, I'll answer that next question live as well. Yeah, the press book is completely downloadable. You can download it, you can print it. Um, you can download the whole thing. You can download chapters. Yeah, um, if, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah. Um, I would say that students um, had a larger problem with the the website that we're web textbook website that we're using. They had to try to figure out, you know, they're used to a traditional, you know, they're used to a traditional text, you know, where they, you know, it's chapter one and it's 25, 50 pages. And here is just one web page with hyperlinks to everything. And I think that, I mean, that's a huge learning curve right now for my students is I have to, to walk them through and, and show them how to get to all the information within the, the textbook. Um, so I, yeah, I think that the, the web-based textbook right now, they can't download that. They have to have internet, but the, the press books that we're creating, they have access to that. Um, great question. Um, I'll answer that live too. Um, I mean, I've been working with digital platforms for textbooks for quite some time. And I think that there is a, there is a difference in how students interact with digital materials versus, you know, textbook materials. And maybe that's my personal bias. I mean, I prefer a book in the hand over something that I read digitally. Um, I just, I, I just prefer that. But yeah, I think that there is a difference in how they consume the information. And I have some students that print out everything, like a handful, and some students that don't, you know, print out anything. Um, one thing that is important, though, is that they need to have access to some of those materials for class time. And I don't care if they have a device with them or if they've written, you know, some of that information down in their notebook or, um, you know, taking screenshots or, or whatever. But I think there is a way um, reading and rereading. Yeah, I, yeah, there is a difference in how they consume that information. Does anybody have any questions about the platforms I use? Oh, great question. Um, both of these two next questions kind of uh, um, follow, they, they kind of go align with each other. Anything surprised me in uh, the process and what did I learn as an educator? I want the, what I learned as an educator is what, what's important and what's not important uh, for, especially for students, but for me as well. And I, 
I have been a consumer of, of traditional textbooks, my whole college education and, and, um, life. Um, and the, inf- it's not so much about the, the book in the hand, it's the getting the information that you need in order to succeed at the topic that you're learning. So something that I learned about myself would definitely be, um, would definitely be fo- s- s- focusing activities more and, and the materials that we have uh, more towards students. And one way to do that is the freeness of it, right? Um, I mean, that is a huge, that has been a huge uh, difference for my students. Even when I first started working with this OER text, I told them, hey, it's not perfect, but it's free and we'll fix the parts that aren't perfect. Um, but I also told them that I need your help with that, right? If there's something that you um, are not understanding through the materials, then then I need your your help. And something that surprised me is how much I actually like doing this. Um, it's it's fun doing all these little, uh, you know, finding the content and then having it available for students. Um, Amber asked, are there features in the H5P that you'd like to see added? Um, no, I've used the video platform. I've used, um, uh, you know, uh, create, putting a video in there and then having students answer questions at certain points of the video. Um, and I like that. Um, obviously the fill in the blank and the, you know, matching stuff is what students are used to in traditional you know, workbook activities. Um, So I don't think, I think that it has mostly everything. The one thing that I've been frustrated with H5P is um, I wanted to create it in the H5P platform so that I could use it across multiple um, uh, platforms. So on my Google site, for instance, and I can't just embed it from there. So there's, um, there's a problem with the, the embedding idea. And so I, ca- I have to create it again within Pressbooks. Um, I don't want a link, which I can do very easily. I want it to be live um, in, in the Pressbook. So uh, that's something that I think that they might be able to, to work with. Um, what clicked for you when you realized that OER um, I mean, I, I've, I've been a proponent of OER for a long time. I think that even before I knew it, because I share all my stuff and do whatever you want with this, you know, create whatever you want. So I think that um, what clicked for me is instead of when I realized how important it was, it realized how much of it I already do and how much we as educators already do with materials. And um what OER actually is. I don't think it's just textbooks. I know it's not textbooks. It's, you know, conversational activities that I create or tests that I, um, tests that I create and share with people to rework and remix for their own uses. Um, I think that in, to engage, to teach and engage with students, sure, but to to collaborate. I think that uh, collaboration and sharing of materials, stu- teachers already do that on on a regular basis. Well, for, for me, for content development um, this summer, the textbook part of it, the, the vocabulary and structures, that's gonna take a long time, I think. Um, but I was very lucky that I already had a baseline, right? I already had something that I could jump off of to rework and remix um, for like the math group, for instance. I mean, they, that, that just presented, I mean, they had to, um, you know, figure out first of all, what's their project and then what's the information that we want to include in it. I was very lucky in the idea that I had, um, I was able to, um, you know, have something already, um, and kind of, and rework and remix that. So I was very lucky that way. But I think that, I think the longest, as far as, you know, with this Opal fellowship that I've been a part of, I think that the longest part is, um, is like, well, what is my project? What is it? Um, what am I going to create and why? I think that is probably 
Um, and then once you're go going from there, then um, then that's it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate all the great questions and for you listening for uh, about this project. It's near and dear to my heart.